We're back, Bacon. It's been a little while since we've done a podcast. We have our new new setup set up for everybody to see. Looking good, man. Hopefully, uh, everybody likes it. You know, we have a, our background with all of our banners, and we have our nice little podcast table that we can hopefully do some cool stuff with. Heck yeah! So, all right, so we're back. So it's been a little while, about a week or so since we've done one. Um, we've all been busy, and a lot of things have happened since the last podcast. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where where do we want to start? Do you want to start with uh maybe I guess there's good stuff, bad stuff. I mean, what do you want to start to talk about? I guess let's start with the bad stuff, that way we can finish on the good. Okay, so let's uh as everybody probably knows, the whole internet knows, um Louis Simmons died last week. Yeah. That was um, tough. So most people if you're listening to this, you probably know who Louis Simmons is. If you don't, he's pretty much I don't know if he's the godfather or whatever. It depends on how you look at strength and conditioning and all that good stuff. But he's the one who brought strength and conditioning to the masses mm-hmm. in the States, I believe. Yeah. Um, just from all of his research, all of his trial and error, his gym, his powerlifting career, his athlete's career. I mean, no one's probably done more for strength and conditioning and powerlifting and just the barbell – the uh, iron games than he has in the states. I'd like yeah. to say. Isn't the uh, the reverse hyper basically attributed to him? Yeah. Like, as far as in the states, like he no, saw plans no. so, for it. So he saw like in one like of something the, in Russia in one, or something. In one of the Russian manuals, he saw a reverse hyper. Or a, no, in one, of the, I don't know if he saw the. He didn't see the reverse hyper. He saw like the glued hams, or he might have saw a reverse hyper in one of the manuals. Something similar for like a back uh, distraction machine. But, you know, he created that. We have two over there. We have one over here. We have our GHDs. We have all that stuff here. Yeah. So he's credited for creating a lot of cool stuff and uh-huh. creating it because he was injured and he had to overcome those injuries. Yeah, like he broke his back twice, multiple times. Yeah, the and then came years. back and, and set was, records. Yeah, like twenty, like after that, and years all the way into his sixties, fifties, and sixties. Nuts, record. man. Um, but like one thing about Louis that a lot of people, I don't know if pe- the weightlifters, the weightlifting people, they want to hate on him because he talks a lot of shit about weightlifters and how. Things should be, and then they come back and well, he's never coached a weightlifter or this or that. You talking but, like Olympic weightlifters? Yeah, Olympic okay. weightlifting. But I think every program you do has some sort of sprinkle or thought from something he did. Mm-hmm. The sequencing, mm-hmm. the periodization, the undulating, or the concurrency of it. Um, so every weightlifter, there's some part of your program that's probably being contributed by him because he took all of his the pro the, the west side the dynamic max effort reputation he took all that from the russian manuals and he made it for his sport of powerlifting yeah and all he ever wanted to do was push it to all sports to make mm-hmm. everybody stronger bigger faster um so there's if you're doing a russian style program you're doing a very similar program to louis with multiple you know you have heavy days fast days multiple exercises things like that yeah you know that's a lot of i mean the programming you write for us is I mean, a lot of that is definitely influenced by him, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, especially more of the, um, our strength stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I've slowly gotten more and more kind of not mellow with how we do things, but we definitely have some sort of max effort day, mm-hmm. some sort of dynamic day or speed day or content- compensatory acceleration day, depending on how we want to we wanna put it. And that's all from, you know, his books, his writings, his studies. Because it works. You just have to know how to, how to program it the right way for your population. Mm-hmm. It may yeah. not work for everyone, especially if you don't buy into it. If you're an old-school weightlifter, you're not going to want to buy into Louis Simmons who talks shit about cleaning and snatching and this all the time. But if you take bits and pieces of what he says and use it for a positive into your program, you're going to get better. Yeah, and I think, I think you know, so much of like what Glassman did with CrossFit and then you know, kind of the way you write, like it's, there's no one right way to do – to train athletes. No. You know, it's, it's, okay, what's the newest thing? Okay, now how do I incorporate that? Yeah. And then when you watch it, like, okay, I'm seeing this with this guy. You know, I mean, that there's, it's not a universal system. You no, know, you've got, to, you've got to adapt to everybody and, you know, what's their sport? What position do they play? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, and that's the thing with him. He, it's always, always adapting, always learning, mm-hmm. always challenging himself. I mean, he, he, you know, when they started off, there was just – Right, bars, mm-hmm. box squatting, yeah. max effort, dynamic effort. And then, you know, in the 90s, maybe in the 80s, maybe that's when they started using chains. And then in the 90s. I was going to say, was he the one that kind of started that or, well, as they, far as I, like mainstream? I mean, mainstream here in the States, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they use some sort of, um, 
accommodating resistance in the manuals that he read, even though a lot of people say they didn't. There was some sort of accommodating resistance that he, he would just wouldn't think about it. Yeah. He would have read it somewhere, and then he went off on it. And then in the 90s with uh, the jump stretch bands, um, that's when he got the bands hooked up and realized that you it's going to pull you down faster and it's going to be harder on the way up, whereas the chain, they're both accommodating resistance, but they're two totally different mm-hmm. ways of doing where a chain – Less stress from your nervous system, a little bit easier to handle, especially for a newcomer, and easier to do for a long period of time. But if you're doing bands for max effort work, I mean, you want to probably maybe do that for like three, four weeks and then taper off of it because you're going to be smoked, fried. Yeah. You know, you'll get super strong when you super compensate for uh-huh. it. But um, you'll be pretty fried for him. But he, you know, he, he went from just straight weight to chains to bands to weight releasers to all the specialty bars that he created. That everybody uses now from the sa- from the safety bars to the camber bars to the bowed bars. I mean, we have a kabuki one. I mean, we have all, all the bars that they do. Fat bar. I mean, axle bars. You know, the strong men that come up with that. He they did that for shoulder health and tricep health. Yep. Or elbow health, I should say. Yeah, yeah. If you if you touch a barbell for sport, something you do has been influenced by Louis Simmons. Oh yeah, I mean, I can remember um, when I was at Virginia Tech. And they didn't really talk about it, but on uh, it was usually like probably Thursdays was our um, lower body day, our speed day, and we use um, the tendo units to show you know the speed of the bar, um, mean power, mean velocity, all that good stuff. And I didn't really know; I just know hey, we have to keep it above .08. That's the goal. Point eight, I mean .80 to one. That's that's the goal of it, right? And then I get to, um, and it's more of an Olympic based program, all the other stuff. But on that one day. We use the tender unit for speed, mm-hmm. like a dynamic day. Um, then I get the south, and it's pretty much all west side style training. And I didn't like it at first. And I can remember I emailed Coach. She was like, man, I don't like this stuff. I'm not getting better. It's not enough, it's not enough volume. It's no Olympic lifting. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And he just told me to trust the process. Um, and who would have thought 10 years later my base program is some sort of conjugate concurrent system from yeah. West Side Barbell. Even though, you know, I have we do the Olympic lifting and we do more periodization, the base of it is still the conjugate because yeah. I feel like you get the most out of that. Because you're at, at not one point of the year are you just focusing on one goal. You're slowly hitting everything all year round. You may be focusing more on strength one or power or hypertrophy at certain times during the year, but at the same time you're still hitting all those attributes mm-hmm. throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah, because we go back to chains three or four times a year. Yeah. And then band work, again, three or four times a year. And it does, man. It makes you strong as can be. Yeah. But, man, it's always nice when, when it's done. When you look in there and, and on that Monday, it's like, okay, just regular squats. Yeah. Or it's like, you know, he talks to you. People want to talk about, like, the Bulgarians and stuff. And, he's, and he talks about it either on, like, um, the Conjugate Club or any videos you can find on YouTube. Yeah. The reason they're so strong is they, they freaking max out all the time. They had little micro doses of organs. They max out, max out, max out, max out, max out, max out. And they run all the drugs so they recover, max out, max out, max out. So their sensory nervous system is constantly firing and adapting and getting mm-hmm. better and getting better. Yeah. Yeah, if you've ever, if you ever come across a, a documentary with, a, you know, anything about West Side or Louis, yeah. watch it. Because yeah. the dude is such a character. Um, I mean, some of the most entertaining things I've ever watched. Oh yeah, I mean, like if you if you're not if you've never seen West Side vs. the World, watch it on Netflix. Yes. If you have the money or just for the month, uh, pay for the Conjugate Club. It has all of the books he's written, articles, workout plans, videos, seminars, just to learn. And you just take bits and pieces because he says a lot of wacky shit too. <laughs> but if you take bits and pieces of what he's talking about and pull out what he's trying to say. It'll benefit you not only in weightlifting, powerlifting, strongman, football training, athletic performance. I mean, it, it all works, you know. Absolutely. I mean, like the knees over toes guy, all he does is talks about, he's talking about GPP, sled work, sled work, sled work, sled work, and who's been talking about sled work for 30 years, right? Yeah. Crazy. The man. All right, next Yeah, thing. so huge loss there. All right, now I think that's all the bad stuff. Yeah. So good stuff. Where do we want to start? Do we want to talk about uh, CrossFit that just finished up? Yeah, we got CrossFit quarterfinals going on, or actually finished up this weekend. All right, so let's jump in there. All right. So yeah. So there was. We don't talk about CrossFit enough. Yeah. So we had at least five athletes here in Mobile yeah. who made it to the quarterfinals. Let me see. 
We know Jess. We know Jess did. We've had her on the show before. Yeah, Jess. We got to get her back on the show once. Uh, well, she gets back from uh, Cookville. She's been yeah, in Cookville she's in for May- a while. She's been in Mayhem training and did the yeah. quarterfinals in Mayhem. So, who knows if she'll make it as an individual, or as a teammate in Mayhem? I'm sure. If May- I'm sure she'll be. Able to- I think they're trying to send like four or five teams overall. Now, the one down in um, South America, they got disqualified as a team because um, the, and one of their coaches, Facundo was on, um, I think he was on Savant's podcast, and he was talking about it like, um, you know, that the, the rule is you all, like the four of you have to train in the same facility 80% of the time, and you have to live within 100 miles of the facility that you claim is your home. Well, the, the equipment down there is real sparse and hard to find, especially yeah. for like elite level training. So they were kind of working out. It's like a couple gyms had kind of gone together to put to put enough equipment together and so they were claiming that as their gym well hq found out about it and it's not it's not like a truly it's not the truly licensed place that they had signed up under so for that reason they can't they can't qualify as a team they can still they're still all in as individuals but they can't be a team really i feel yeah. like everybody in the Ever since they had that rule where you don't have to get the same gym, I feel like everybody. Well, they changed. They they now they flipped it back. Now you have to live within a hundred miles of, you know, your hope, your, whatever gym you claim you're a member of. Hopefully nobody. Trying cro- to hopefully cross HQ doesn't listen to this as we talk about Jessica then, because I know she's a hundred miles. Well, yeah, well, I mean, maybe she, hey, maybe she's established. She's been up there. Shoot, I mean, since the beginning of the year, she's been up there three or four times. So maybe she's established res- residence up there. I don't know. But yeah, I doubt. We'll get her back on after this because she'll go to the games. It'd be good to get her on. Absolutely. And then there was a no matter of, what, she's going to go. She's going to go do a couple of the. Uh, she's definitely going to the. Uh, the they're not uh, sanctions anymore. They're uh, they, semifinals. Yeah, whatever that's called. Yes. Semifinals. And then you had um, Rachel. She qualified for the quarterfinals. I was on team. We went to a couple things together. Me and Rachel as uh, teammates. Yeah. And then you had uh, let's see who else is there. Kelly Law. She's old school. She was at CrossFit Mobile. When I first started, she's back in town. She made the quarterfinals. Nice. We have uh, Carrie Cox made the quarterfinals. Nice. And then you had a couple of masters at. Oh, hold on. She's got her new. Uh, she's got the new. Uh, what? Uh, not rowing for life. Row. Uh, crew, crew fitness. Crew fitness. fitness. She's got a new oh, one open in Midtown. Opening up down the street. Yeah. You have a Madeline Booker who's new. She looks young, but she made it. And then you also had uh, Celia Store, Renee Birchall. And uh, Olivia Phillips. So, you had a bunch of people from JH females make it. I don't think any guys made it. But a um, bunch of females made it. And then I think we had two from Mobtown make it as well. Okay. Like a uh, Masters. Brent, I think Brent Ward made it. And I think his daughter made it too as a – I don't know what division she would be in. Cause I think she's 17. I'm trying to think of – I don't know how that I works. I can't remember exactly how old she is now. So, she still may she, be a teen. She's a senior at McGill. So, I don't know if she's okay. 17 or 18. But – he made the quarterfinals, so that's pretty cool. That's awesome. We had a bunch of people in the area make the quarterfinals. Yeah. And um, we had a bunch of people here do it. Um, so it'd be good to see where they fall, I guess, tomorrow or today. The results would come out because everything would be put Yeah, if in. they get everything updated. Yeah. I guess we're at the mercy of, of uh, CrossFit to get that figured out so we can see who who's moving on. Those workouts look pretty cool, man. The yeah. fact they brought back, brought back the, uh, the new total. Oh, yeah. That was interesting. I, um, I, I, I toyed with the idea Saturday of wanting to play around with that. I remember, uh, as a matter of fact, it was either Saturday or Sunday, um, Jason texted us in a group message and sent us that link of the guy who ever did like 401 or 402. From oh, Gee. Yeah. Yeah, 407. And, um, yeah, clean. so I texted him back and I said, yeah. I remember when the one time I didn't, I did the open, but I didn't sign up for it, was it was like the workout and the max clean. Yeah. I did the workout and I did okay in it, but I was training for weightlifting at the time and then I cleaned 405, which would have been number one in the world, which would have. Gave me like two thousand dollars. Ah man! Matter of fact, that was the same one. Like I think Cody, after like thirteen weeks, ten weeks, clean and jerk like two seventy after labor and surgery. Yeah. Wow. So. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Gee's numbers were crazy, and then uh, Mala Brown put up some good numbers. Um, as little as she is. Yeah. I mean, she's a monster, man, and, and it's like seventeen years old. Yeah, seventeen, crazy. eighteen, something like that. She's it's a so monster. It's interesting to see what happens after this week, where everybody goes and. Yeah. What happens? And then do they get to choose the quarterfinal location again, or do they pick them? Because remember, last last year you could go like to Vegas. You could have went to Granite Games. You could have gone to these different events. Yeah. You could have, could have the way to go. I don't. I've, I've not heard on that if they get if they get any uh, 
preference of where they want to go. I think I think it still ties into like area. Yeah, like where they're where they're from. Um, because they're saying Tia may have to go back, and then um, the the big Russian that that finally made it over here. Um, oh gosh, I'm blanking on his name. He's he's he's, he's qualified like four years oh, in a row, and he, yeah. and he finally met, I'm blanking on his finally name. Got over here to do it. Yeah, and, he, and he's here. He's he's actually training down in Florida with the Brute Street guys. Oh really? Yeah, and um, but the, but if he has to go back to compete in his semi. Is he then going to get be able, especially with all the stuff that's going over there in the Ukraine right now? Like, is he going to then be able to get back in again? Um, so, I wonder if they'll make an exception for him, let him compete somewhere in the states. I mean, they did it for Tia last year because of the COVID travel stuff. I wonder if they'll. I wonder if they'll work with him. I mean, I hope so because he literally he's qualified like four years in a row and couldn't get the visa. Yeah. And then he got he got some help. Some uh, some gym owners in Madison actually like stepped up and like figured out. Figured out who to start talking to early, um, to yeah, because I mean he he got his visa in like early February and and has been over here, and his wife's having a baby. Well, I know um well that's good because I know like Damien was telling me that uh, a Ukrainian either strongman woman or I can't remember what it, but she did with the, the record breakers at the Arnold yeah and she's stuck here now because of what's going on so they've been raising a lot of money for her to just kind of like live until whatever yeah who knows over there so. yeah. But all right, and the next thing, I guess the biggest thing that's happened is Tristan. He, oh boy, uh, he uh, actually, I know a couple weeks ago we said he got third and second, but came out he got first in uh, his division, and then he got a call. He made Team USA for Youth Worlds in June. This is just awesome, man! Congrats, yeah. Tristan. Yeah, maybe we can next time he walks over here, we we'll try to get him on camera, his shy self. But, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if he'll ever actually sit down and uh, and talk with us. Unless you uh, unless you make him like you put it in his him. put it in his programming. I'll make him. I'll get him over in a second. Hey Q, tell Tristan to come here. Um, but yeah, so like, so it was like a Friday. I got an email at like one o'clock as I was leaving. I leave it before I was coming to the facility. I looked at it. What? So then I emailed it to his dad, or I called his dad. I emailed it to him. I said, hey, I need you to uh, read this to make sure I'm reading it right. <laughs> and then he, uh, yeah, so he made Team uh, team USA for the Youth Worlds for the 89 kilograms. Yeah. And um, so it should be really interesting to see how he does. We're going to Mexico this this upcoming I was about to week. say, y'all leave next week for Matter Mexico, Matter of fact, right? there he is right there. Why don't you come here, come little here, guy? Come here, man. Yeah. That way you can hear yourself talk. Talk right into the microphone. We can lower it for you, little guy. So, everybody, this is Tristan. If hey. you had, used to be known as right Angel Soft on some of the old videos from about four <laughs> or five years ago. But, um, so how does it feel to make Team USA? Uh, feels good. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do, and finally do it. It feels, it feels good. Feels good that all the hard work's finally paying off? Yeah. Well, that's good, Tristan. How does it feel to be on the on the podcast and on video? Because I know you love to uh, socialize so much. It's a, it's a little weird. A little weird. Yeah, oh, I'd be all right. So what? Um, how's your training going? Going good. About to start my hand clean. Uh, they're probably gonna suck, but I ain't gotta do it. Why you say that? Because they're two sixty five. I mean, you clean and jerk like, you know, one forty five, three fifteen. Yeah, so it should yeah. be pretty easy though. Hopefully. Uh, well, we'll find out. Well, I know you don't like to talk. I just wanted to get you on camera. Congratulate you, everybody. See who you are. Thank you, thank you. So, everybody, um, in like three months in June, June 8th through the 12th is Youth World. So, uh, set the calendar, watch it. Well, I'm sure we'll have the post out there, and hopefully he can uh, hit some big numbers, bring home some hardware from Mexico. And hopefully he can get his passport so he can go to the training camp on Saturday. Yeah, so. Hopefully. I wasn't sure he was actually going to go through with that. Uh, he's getting a little bit better with all that stuff. So, But, yeah, so that was pretty exciting getting Dude, that, that's awesome, that email man. about that because, I mean, that's out of nowhere. I mean, he's been doing really good, and if he would have hit his last jerk, I mean, he for sure would have been number one. I guess he is number one in the country now, but he, the kid that was number one, I guess, is moving up to 96. So he would actually be, he would have beaten him, and, like, he would have solidified number one in the country um, overall, right? Yeah. I mean, we weren't even thinking about making, like, Team USA or Junior Worlds or Youth Worlds or whatever. 
I mean, we said it like, hey, dude, if you'd hit this, you know, you'd have been like number one in the country. You would have made Team USA because they've already picked it, but then you could have told everybody, right? And then three weeks later, get the email. Still counts. Yeah, still counts. Yeah. So it'll, be, it'll be fun. It'll be good for him to next week go down and train with a bunch of people, kids his age, a little bit younger, a little bit older, different coaches. Good for me to learn. I was about to say, how's that going to work on the coaching aspect? Like, you are, you're his coach, but will he, is he going to follow – yeah, so while he's there, somebody so else's. What I think is so how the sketch, how the uh, my itinerary is. It's um, we'll get there Saturday, and we'll train Sunday through Friday, I think, or Sunday through Thursday. I can't remember if we fly back Friday or Saturday, but I mean we have two days. Um, and I'm sure they have a plan that we're gonna follow, and we're just gonna follow it. I'm not gonna yeah deviate. I mean, I might yeah. throw in a couple things here and there that I know he needs to do that work yeah. for him, or maybe like I know, hey, he's not. He, this doesn't quite jive how he works, but I mean. We're going to do what they have because, I mean, these are the Team USA coaches. Yeah. Do we know who the who's, who is the Team USA coach right now? Do we know? I mean, you may know who he is. I don't. For the females, I don't. I mean, it, it's on It's on the email. I gotta, I'll have to look it up. Um, let's see. Just curious. I have a big group meet with everybody. But it's, it's not. Everybody, I believe, is actually going down there from, like, the head of – Team USA. Oh, nice. Um, those coaches, but like the actual coaches, are, I believe, are some of the coaches for the athletes that have been on Youth Worlds, yeah. Junior Worlds, things like that before. So Cody's not going right, so we won't have that stacked against him from the beginning. No, Cody won't be there, so we don't have to worry about us <laughs> getting in trouble either by officials, referees, the police, by the pool. Yeah, by anybody, <laughs> by Interpol. I think we'll be pretty good. That's man, that's gonna be awesome. So, well, was a, anything else before we get off? Just make a quick. Um, uh, I mean, you're still bouncing. How's your How's your shoulder feeling? So the shoulder's getting better. It's about uh, it'll be eight weeks on Thursday. Um, and I've really only been training for four weeks back, I guess you could say. Um, today I squatted six hundred just with a belt. So that's good, and I'm still doing muscle cleans, muscle snatches, things of that nature, just to kind of get, you know, back to the groove, but I still don't, I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. Of course, it still hurts, like the jarring effect still yep. bothers yep. me a little bit. But it's getting better and better um, each week. So hopefully in 10 weeks, once I actually get cleared for the Olympic dynamic stuff, yeah. hopefully the pain will be away. Nice. So, good luck with that, man. I appreciate it. But uh, remember, like, share, subscribe, send this everywhere, and – uh We'll see you guys next time. Remember, say savage, not average. Shoot it.